We have a brand new operator in PHP 7, and that is the spaceship operator. And it does multiple comparisons and returns a value depending on the values to the left and to the right of it. And the reason why it's called a spaceship operator is because it kind of does look like a spaceship. So the way that we type this operator out is we have the less than equals and then the greater than symbols and you put them all together and it looks like a little spaceship and that is the spaceship operator. Now depending on what happens you will get a number returned from this operator's process. You will get negative one if the value on the left is less than the value on the right, zero if the value on the left and the value on the right match and you'll get one returned if the value on the left is greater than the value on the right. So depending on the circumstances, you'll either get negative one for less than zero is equal to or one is greater than. So you can see here that the values to the left and to the right are matching. They are equal in terms of their value. So what that will do is as it's a balance, it will return the value zero telling me that the value on the left and the value on the right is equal. And there we go, we have the value zero. Now likewise, if the value on the left was greater, so I said the value on the left is 200 and the value on the right is two, well greater than is one. So I should get a one returned right here. So I hit refresh, there you go, I get a one. And if it was less than, so the value on the left is now one and it's less than the value on the right. And so what happens is that will return negative one to tell me the value on the left is less than the value on the right. Now also note that there can be a bit of polymorphism going off here, which again means it's gonna adapt the data types to suit the environment. So for example, we could have, let's say, two, and then we could have the value on the right set to the string two. So we have the two different data types, an integer and a string, and what it will do is it will convert that string. It will look at it and say, look, I can identify that string as a number. So it will just convert it into an integer. So I'm gonna save that, hit refresh, and you'll notice it gives me the value of zero saying this integer data type and this string data type are in fact equal after the polymorphism process. And just to prove that, let's change this to 200. So now the value on the right is greater than the value on the left, so it will return the value of one. Save it, hit refresh, and you'll now notice that's what we get. And then also you can have floating point numbers in there as well, so I can say 200.22, which again, it's still a data type of string, but it will convert it into a floating point number, and you'll see again, we get the exact same negative one. And you know, you can compare integers and floating points. And you can also have Boolean data types in there as well. So for example, I could say, true. Now what do you think this is going to give us? Now we know that true can polymorph into the value of one, an integer. So we should sort of expect in our minds that we would get a one returned from this operation because we can see that the value on the left is greater than the value on the right because that could be polymorphed into the value one, but we won't actually see that. I'm gonna save it and hit refresh you'll notice we see a zero, which says that, look, these two values are actually equal, but why? Well, if you have any number, any integer that is not zero, it will be classed as truthy. So 2.2, so for example, is again going to be truthy. So it's gonna be zero, it's gonna be equal. So this actually polymorphs and says, look, that's true. But if you have zero, that will polymorph into false. So now let's save this and hit refresh. And you'll notice we get negative one. So negative one means that zero, which could be morphed into false, is less than true. Falsy is always less than true. So we get negative one. The value on the left is in fact lesser than the value on the right. So you can see there that there is a bit of polymorphism going off with this operator and you just have to play around with it. Likewise, an empty string can be polymorphed into a false 
value. So I can save that now and we'll still get negative one. So that polymorphed into false. And also you could have a string with the zero integer inside of it. And again, that won't trick the compiler. You'll still get negative one. You also can have, let's say, a raise. So I could say 20, 20, and 20. And let's then copy this and paste it on the other side. And save it, hit refresh. We get a zero. That's because these arrays contain the same amount of elements. And also those element values are the same. But what happens, let's say, if I was to change this array, and I'm going to change the first element in the array to 200. Well, now what you're expecting is a 1 because this array is greater than the value of this array. So let's go ahead and save it, hit refresh, and we do get a 1. This array's total is 240. That array is the total of 60. And again, that polymorphism can happen as well. But also, you can play around with this and play around with the values. So now we have on the right hand side a greater array because it has four 20s and the one on the left has three 20s. So what will this give back? Well, if we look at it simply, you can see that the one on the left is lesser than the one on the right. So we should get negative one. Hit refresh and there you go, negative one. So we can also use this spaceship operator within an if statement as well. So if I just knock all of this off and we pop in an if statement, we can compare these two arrays and then I can echo out something. Now, the reason why I'm going to say something happened is because this operator can give one of three values, negative one, zero, one. Now, a truthy value is anything other than zero. So this condition is looking for a truthy statement. So anything other than zero is true. So negative one is a truthy statement. One is a true statement. So if the value on the left is less than or greater than the value on the right, then it will be a truthy statement and it will execute this right here. But if it's zero, meaning both those values are equal to one another, it will return zero and that will be a falsy statement. So in lieu of that fact, what we could get here, just like we did before, is negative one. That's what will be returned. And so that's actually classed as truthy. So let's go ahead and save this. And then let's refresh this in the browser. You'll see it says something happened. Let's make the arrays equal. So I'm going to save that and hit refresh. You'll notice as they were equal, both the left array and the right array are equal, it returns zero and that's falsy. And also let's make one greater than. So the one on the left now has 200 or is gonna be equal to 240 and the other one's gonna be 60. So I'm gonna save that, hit refresh and you'll notice it says something happened. So if it returns one or negative one, it's truthy and zero, it's gonna be falsy. Now also what you can do is you can pop these in the brackets. So what we're doing is we're encapsulating this operator right here and we're saying, look, perform this first. And then what you can do is another comparison and say, look, is this equal to one? And then we can say, this is gonna be greater than. And so this is now going to be performed first of all and that will return one because this array on the left is greater than this array on the right. So this will return the value of one and one is equal to one. And so that's what you will get echoed out. So if I save that, hit refresh, there you go. It says greater than, and now if this operator right here returns zero or negative one, then it won't run this code. So you can use it in the if statement. It's quite nice just to use it, let's say inside of a variable or something like that. Don't forget to, let's say, assign a value. You could do a equals and then pop that operator in there just like we were doing before. So it's a good operator that you could use for many different cases, I'm sure, but all it's doing is it's comparing left and right and it's 
based on the number, negative one, zero, or one, will tell you the comparison of the two values.